Natural Disaster Economics. This is going to be a talk at the intersection of environmental and urban economics because it's going to focus on natural disasters and environmental shock and how they affect cities. And the key uh, throughout what we're, I'm going to talk about in this brief segment is that these shocks are anticipated because of improvements in information technology and tracking systems. So Hurricane Sally is bearing down on the U.S. Northeast. It's late October 2012. What damage will this nasty storm impose on the Northeast? How much damage will it cause? How many people will die? As usual, I'm an optimist here. We see the punch coming. In my 2005 paper, The Death Toll from Natural Disasters, I documented that across nations, richer nations suffer less death when natural disasters occur. And I think something similar will play out in this case. So I'm an economist predicting the future. Pretty, uh, pretty, prediction is tough stuff. Why am I optimistic about Hurricane Sally's impact? Because we see the punch coming. Government has already been sharing the news about the likely path for this disaster and is sharing this information through trusted outlets such as the New York Times. Self-interested individuals are reading this information and are making plans. My parents in New York City have, uh, are stocking up on water and food for Monday, and households all over the Northeast region are evacuating flood-prone areas and taking proactive steps to reduce the impacts on their loved ones. An open question is whether the poor can take such steps. And of course they're more vulnerable than richer households. And if we anticipate this, then government uh, out of environmental justice has to help protect these individuals. As individuals take steps to protect themselves, reducing their exposure to this risk, heading to higher ground, purchasing food and water to ride out the storm, the net effect of this adaptation is to reduce the ex post damage caused by these disasters. So I see in my second to last bullet point here, it should say the net effect of anticipation, not the next effect of anticipation. Unlike unprepared creatures who don't have an imagination of the future, we adapt to the new normal. When you see the punch coming, you duck. And, this, and that is a half joke, but that is the intuition of, of how rational expectations of future events allows us to take precautionary steps so that we suffer less when the disaster takes place. That's what I mean by the economics of anticipation. Let me show you some data. What you have here in this weird graph that looks like, uh, um, G not sure what it looks like, is you have five continents, Africa, the Americas, Asia, Europe, and Oceania across from left to right. And you have time from 1900 to the year 2010 uh, on the vertical axis. This is the count of natural disasters that have taken place over the last 110 years. Notice all the shocks that Asia and Europe and the Americas have suffered. These data are from MDAT. If you type into Google EM-DAT, D-A-T, you can download all sorts of terrific information from this European International Disaster Database. So this is the count of natural disasters. Now let's take a look at the deaths from these natural disasters over the same time period. So folks, focus on Asia, the middle column. And notice that in the 1920s and 1930s, Asia had a very large count of deaths from natural disasters. But notice in recent years, even though Asia has experienced even more natural disasters, the death count has sharply decreased. How could this be? I would claim it's the same logic from my 2005 Review of Economics and Statistics paper, the death toll from natural disasters. While there's more people on the planet, we are growing increasingly wealthier and we have increased information technology for tracking natural disasters. When, you, when individuals and governments have increased income and they have increased information, they're better able to withstand natural disaster shocks. And this isn't just a raw optimism. Look at the data here and see that while there's more people on the planet, we are, and more of us are living in coastal areas, we're suffering much less deaths over time, many fewer deaths over time from natural disasters. That's progress. And what underlies this is individual self-interest, improvement in building materials, 
information and heading to higher ground. And the net effect of this are fewer deaths. In a future lecture, I will come back to the implications for climate change. If climate change means we're going to suffer more natural disasters, but if we're better able to adapt to each of these, I'm, that increases my optimism about urbanites ability to handle a punch of hurricanes and floods. I recognize in the case of climate change that there's known unknowns, and I will talk in the future about the implications for my Climatopolis book. But when I think about Hurricane Sally's impact tomorrow, a rich, informed, self-interested nation is going to be able to withstand this punch. This is an ugly field experiment we're going to run tomorrow, but I'm optimistic that due to self-interest, the damage caused by Sally will be relatively low. If I'm wrong, we need to investigate this and learn from this data point.